In Gladiator 2, we're introduced to the character Jugurtha. He's shown as a noble king of Numidia and a mentor to Lucius. In reality, this is a king who murdered his own family members to come to power. He was known for bribing and corrupting Roman senators and ended up waging a long and bloody war against Rome. This is the true story of Jugurtha. The story begins in the Second Punic War. Hannibal Barca, the Carthaginian general, inflicted severe defeats against the Romans. And he was famous for employing Numidian cavalry in his army. And the Numidians were a people who lived to the west of Carthage. And they were famous for their horsemen in the ancient world. They were said to have been able to ride without saddles, without bridles. They only had a basic rope to steer the horse. But during the Second Punic War, there was a group of Numidians, a tribe of Numidians, who saw that the war was turning in favor of the Romans and actually switched sides. So when we finally get to the Battle of Zama, the Carthaginians and Romans both have Numidians fighting for them in their armies against each other. And the Numidians who were fighting for the Romans were led by a king called Masinissa. And Masinissa pretty much turned the tide of the Battle of Zama in favor of the Romans and helped them win the battle. And for his loyalty, he was rewarded with the Kingdom of Numidia and he expanded his territory and for the first time, Numidia was ruled by one king, whereas in the past it was many different tribes. And Masinissa was a legendary king and he was a friend of Rome. And he began this long-term alliance and friendship between Numidia and Rome. And Masinissa would live to the age of 90. And even into his old age, he's said to have still been able to ride a horse without a saddle. And Masinissa, in the end, he ended up having three sons, but two of them died of illness. And one of the sons succeeded him as the new king, and his name was King Mikipsa. And Mikipsa kept the alliance with Rome going, he kept ruling the kingdom. King Mikipsa himself had two sons, and he also had a nephew from one of his brothers that had died of illness. And this nephew was named Jugurtha. He was raised by his uncle in the royal court alongside his two cousins. But Jugurtha's mother was a concubine and that made him kind of the black sheep of the family. They kind of looked down upon him as, as lesser than the rest of them simply because his mother wasn't of you know royal blood. But despite that, Jugurtha was a very gifted and talented individual. He was very handsome, he was physically fit, and he had a very sharp intellect and wit. Jugurtha rejected the luxuries of royal life, and he liked to partake in the traditional Numidian games and sports, like horse riding, javelin throwing, and foot racing competitions. And he would compete against the common people, and this made him very popular amongst the common Numidian folk. He had a very good reputation, people liked him, people gravitated towards him. He was also said to have been a great hunter, and he was one of the few men in Numidia who was able to hunt lions. So the king Mikipsa, he was a little bit worried that Jugurtha was beginning to outshine him and the rest of his family. You know, he could see how popular Jugurtha was becoming, how talented he was, and his sons were still a bit younger and not so developed, and he was also getting very old, and he was a bit insecure that maybe one day Jugurtha who has all the support of the people would decide to just kick them out, overthrow them and take over the kingdom of Numidia for himself. He was worried about that. He saw the opportunity when the Romans came to them to request some soldiers for a war they were fighting in Spain. When you were an ally of Rome, it wasn't so much just equal footing allies. Being an ally of Rome, meant you you were basically their servant 
and whenever they called upon you, you had to send them troops and uh, resources and tribute. And the Romans were fighting a war in Iberia in a place called Numantia. Jugurtha had a lot of energy, he was eager for military glory. So the king Makipsa saw it as a good outlet and a good opportunity to send Jugurtha away to Spain to lead the Numidian troops to fight for the Romans in Spain. And he wouldn't be too unhappy if Jugurtha didn't come back, you know, if something happened to Jugurtha over there. He knew that Jugurtha was very courageous and very brave. He was kind of hoping that Jugurtha would be killed in action and that would solve his problems and uh, he wouldn't have to worry about Jugurtha anymore. But it turned out Jugurtha was a natural soldier and he impressed the Romans so much. Even the commander, the famous commander Scipio Africanus personally knew Jugurtha and personally praised him for how brave and how courageous he was in battle. One of the Roman writers from the time, Sallust, said that by his unquestioning obedience and his indifference to danger, he soon became a hero to the Romans and a terror to his enemies. And so while Jugurtha was there fighting for the Romans, he learned to speak Latin and he learned a lot of the ways of you know, Roman culture and Roman society. He also got a glimpse of a bit of the corruption and greed that was fueling Roman society at the time. And he got the impression that Roman officials could be bribed, um, which would influence a lot of his decisions later in his life. They were victorious in the Iberian campaign, they conquered Numantia. Before Jugurtha returned to Numidia, Scipio Africanus gave him advice and he said to Jugurtha, if you continue on this path, you will naturally become the king and leader of your people. But if you're impatient and you try to come to power too hastily or too quickly, you might fail. And when he returned back home, Scipio Africanus, this Roman general, even sent a letter back to the king Micipsa praising Jugurtha and here is what the letter said according to Sallust. I am aware that you will be pleased to hear that in this war your nephew Jugurtha distinguished himself above all others. I have high regard for what he has done for us and I will do everything in my power to pass that esteem on to the Roman Senate and people. Speaking as your friend, I have to congratulate you personally for finding a man who is worthy of yourself and your father. Referring to King Massinissa. He took this hint from Scipio Africanus and he obediently adopted Jugurtha into his family officially. And because Jugurtha was older than his two sons, he put his two sons kind of in the care of Jugurtha. His wishes was Jugurtha to take care of his sons after he died. And when King Mekipsa finally died, the three heirs, Jugurtha and his two cousins, one was called Adherbal, the other was called Himpsal, they met amongst themselves to see what they were going to do, how they were going to divide up their kingdom amongst themselves. And Jugurtha suggested that all of the policies and laws that their father had instated in the last five years, they should annul them because he was kind of senile and he was very old when he made them. And Himpsal, one of the sons, he was the more arrogant of the two. He said, yeah, I agree with you and one of those decisions he made when he was senile was to adopt you, Jugurtha. And this really rubbed Jugurtha the wrong way. So Jugurtha, a short time later, hired some men to follow Himsol back to his home. And in the dead of night, they broke in and murdered him while he was hiding in his servants' quarters. And they cut off his head and they brought it back to Jugurtha. And obviously, the other brother who was still alive, Adherbal, he was outraged by what Jugurtha had done. And he quickly took up arms against Jugurtha. 
he had the majority of the populace behind him, but Jugurtha had better soldiers and he was a much better general. And Adherbal was easily defeated and he fled to the Roman province of Africa, which had just been recently created from the territory of fallen Carthage. And from there, Adherbal fled to Rome and he went directly to the Senate and he pled for them to intervene. And he was basically saying, this criminal Jugurtha, he's murdered my family members and he's trying to overthrow my kingdom. He's ruined my family and trying to steal everything from me. You couldn't just change the leadership of an ally of Rome without Rome's permission. It was completely illegal what he did. But Jugurtha anticipated this and when Adherbal went to the Senate, at the same time, Jugurtha sent envoys and bribed many of the senators within Rome to actually look the other way. And uh, in the end, the Senate's solution was to split the kingdoms in two, one kingdom for Adherbal, one kingdom for Jugurtha. They gave Jugurtha the more fertile and richer land because he had bribed them. So for the next few years, the, they had two kingdoms and they were living separately. But Jugurtha kept provoking Adherbal, his cousin. He would make incursions into Adherbal's territory and kind of provoke him for a war. Adherbal wasn't that aggressive and he didn't want to fight and he was trying to avoid it as much as possible until Jugurtha eventually just blatantly invaded Adherbal's kingdom and Adherbal had to flee to a fortress called Serta, where Jugurtha surrounded this city, you know, he surrounded this fortified city. And Adherbal was feared for his life and he sent urgent messengers to Rome pleading for help and he was saying that Jugurtha is coming for me, he's thirsting for my blood and all he wants to do is kill me and I'm, I'm trapped here. Uh, you have to do something, you have to help me. The Romans sent a delegation to investigate what was happening in Africa and Jugurtha came to meet them, spoke to them and he claimed that Adherbal was the one trying to kill him and he was a good friend of the Roman people and he refused to make any kind of concessions. So the Romans left without really achieving anything and he continued the siege of Serta. And within the city, there were actually Roman citizens trapped. They were merchants who had been working in the region. They advised Adherbal that if they surrender, they were confident that Jugurtha wasn't gonna kill them because he had just spoken to the Romans. There was no way he would have the audacity to murder them all under the nose of the Romans. Adherbal kind of saw the logic in this and so they thought it was better to surrender and he, maybe he would show mercy to them. So that's what they did. They opened the gates to Jugurtha. Jugurtha came in and as soon as Jugurtha came in, the first thing he did was capture Adherbal torture him and execute him. And uh, he went on to murder all of the Roman citizens and most of the male population of the city as well because he found that they had weapons and he believed that they were involved in the resistance against him. So he just murdered everyone. And when the Romans heard about this, the people of Rome were outraged. Not only has he overthrown a legitimate king and ally of Rome, he's also killed Romans in the process and they wanted to, him to be held accountable. And Jugurtha also sent his son to Rome with money and gifts to kind of sweet talk his way out of the trouble and out of the mess he was in. But the Romans refused, they weren't having any of it and they basically told him, we're only willing to speak to you if you're willing to surrender for what you've done. So the Roman Senate sent a general called Bestia with an army to Africa uh, to deal with Jugurtha. And Jugurtha immediately began negotiations and they ended up coming to a peace deal. Jugurtha paid them money, tribute, he gave them horses and around 30 elephants. 
he was happy to go back to Rome with the news that yeah, Jugurtha, he surrendered to us, he's paid us, he's given us money, and he's gonna be loyal to us from now on. So job done, mission accomplished, we can all go home now. But the Roman people weren't happy with this outcome, and they were wondering how did Jugurtha commit all of these crimes, commit all of these atrocities, and all he has to do is just pay a little bit of money and he gets he gets away with it. They were suspicious that Bestia and his men were bribed. Basically, this whole thing stank of corruption and bribery. And they wanted answers. At the same time, Rome was being invaded from the north by Germanic tribes. And this could have been another reason why Bestia wanted to just solve this problem quickly and not get involved with another war in Africa. So the Romans ended up summoning Jugurtha back to Rome, giving him immunity, promising they weren't going to harm him, they weren't going to do anything to him. They just wanted him to testify. They cared more about finding out who were the corrupt Roman officials, more so than the crimes that Jugurtha had committed. They actually wanted to find out who were the rotten senators and rotten officials within Rome itself. And when Jugurtha arrived, before he could even say a word to the commission, a tribune stepped forward and forbid him from speaking because Jugurtha had also bribed this tribune. So he was brought for a testimony about bribery and he ended up bribing his way out of that too. And on top of that, a cousin of Jugurtha's at the time was living in Rome. His name was Massiva and he had fled Numidia when all of this conflict broke out and he was kind of a claimant to the Numidian throne and he was against Jugurtha. And Jugurtha hired some men while he was in Rome to track down his cousin Massiva and murder him in the street. He blatantly did that while he was in Rome. He knew he had immunity promised to him from the Romans, so the Romans couldn't do anything about it, but they were very insulted by the way that he was so blatantly taking advantage of and making a mockery of their system and making them look like fools. And so they had to allow him to leave from that moment on, there wouldn't be any more peace deals with Jugurtha. And in the year 110, Jugurtha was followed back to Africa by an army under Postumius Albinus. Albinus was a very incompetent general and he didn't achieve much while he was there before he had to return to Rome for the elections. And he left his brother, Ulus, to deal with Jugurtha. In the sources, his brother is described as a conceited ignoranus. Jugurtha took this opportunity when Albinus left his brother in charge to attack their camp, caught them by surprise and cut much of the Roman army to pieces and forced them to surrender. And after that, he took the captives and forced the Roman soldiers to be ritually humiliated by something called passing under the yoke. It was a symbolic gesture for the Romans to acknowledge the superiority of the Midians. After Jugurtha inflicted this defeat on the Romans and humiliated them, he gave them 11 days to leave the country. But Jugurtha's victory only made the Romans more angry and more determined to bring him to justice. So they sent yet another army this time a man by the name of Metullus, who had a reputation for being a very strict disciplinarian and being pretty much incorruptible. You could not bribe this man with anything. That was his reputation. And when Metullus arrived to Africa, the army that he found there was in complete disarray. And he came in and changed all of that. He brought in strict rules, he started drilling them, and he started getting ready for them to face Jugurtha and bring down Jugurtha. Matulis's strategy wasn't about winning big flashy victories. 
He focused on grinding down Jugurtha's resources slowly, bit by bit, and taking key Numidian cities away from Jugurtha and isolating him from his allies. But Jugurtha was a master of guerrilla warfare and he was using the desert and hit and run tactics to harass and frustrate the Romans and prolong the war. So even though Metullus was winning, it was taking a long time, it was very slow and this was causing problems for Metullus back in Rome. Enter Gaius Marius, a ambitious subordinate of Metullus who would later become one of the most important Romans in history. Gaius Marius drove this feeling back in Rome that Metullus' strategy was too slow and Gaius Marius was actually the right man for the job. And eventually he convinced the people and Gaius Marius won the next consulship and was given the command of the war. So Gaius Marius came in, he reformed the Roman army and he had a very aggressive strategy in the war and put Jugurtha on the back foot. Jugurtha was retreating time and time again. But Gaius Marius also had another strategy where he was sending out his lieutenants to try to bribe and turn all of Jugurtha's allies against him. One of his most promising lieutenants was a guy called Sulla. Sulla would also later become very important in Roman history, but at this time he was very young in his career. And Sulla was sent to make contact with the king of Mauritania, one of Jugurtha's best allies. His name was King Bocchus. Interestingly, Sallust tells us at the time the Mauritanians didn't know anything about the Romans. They had never met a Roman. They had just heard about them by name. And the same goes for the Romans. This was the first time these two people interacted. And King, King Bocchus was actually married to one of Jugurtha's daughters. He made a proposal to King Bocchus that if he handed over Jugurtha, the Romans would reward him with everything he wanted, expand his kingdom, and will also be a close ally of Rome. And King Bocchus was considering this, and he invited Jugurtha and Sulla to a conference, and Jugurtha was under the impression that Bocchus was going to hand over the Romans to Jugurtha. But when Jugurtha arrived, King Bocchus signaled to his men, and they killed all of Jugurtha's bodyguards captured Jugurtha and handed him over to Sulla and to the Romans. And that effectively ended the war with Jugurtha. And from there, Sulla handed over Jugurtha to Gaius Marius, who took him back to Rome. But interestingly, Bacchus is said to have given a ring to Sulla depicting this moment when Jugurtha was captured. And Sulla even though Gaius Marius took the credit for capturing Jugurtha, Sulla would continue to wear this ring for the rest of his life. So from there, Gaius Marius takes Jugurtha back to Rome and parades this Numidian king through the city in chains for the amusement of the Roman people. And then he throws him into the most feared prison in all of Rome called the Tullianum which was an old cistern that they converted into a prison. It was essentially a giant pit with a trap door at the top. They threw Jugurtha inside and from there, all of the prisoners jumped on him to rip off his gold earrings that he still had on. And in the process, they ripped off Jugurtha's earlobes. It's also said that at this point, Jugurtha lost his mind. He went completely insane while in the prison. And not long after that, the Romans came in and strangled him to death. And that was the end of Jugurtha. That's how he died. If you enjoyed this story and you want to hear another fascinating story about a North African figure who left his mark on Rome, check out my video about Macrinus here. Thank you and see you next time. Take care.